today We want the quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We want the quiet We shout out
It is so good to see you guys worship this morning. It's so good to worship with your with your handshakes, with your fist bumps, with your interacting with each other. Because I serve a God that the tomb is empty this morning. I serve a God this morning that loves you. I serve a God if you was the only one, praise God, he would have come for you. That's my God. So this morning as we go Lord in prayer, I'm believing this morning. I keep seeing it. That you are the person that you need healing in your body. You might be lost. You might not know Jesus. Today is your day. You might need physical healing because the doctor said, I ain't nothing else I can do for you. I know a great physician this morning. His name is Jesus. He can change your life this morning. So I don't know. I'm just believing for the impossible because why my God can make the impossible possible by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So this morning as we go to prayer this morning, we just want you to pour out and believe our God can do anything. Father God, we thank you this morning. God, we worship you as our King, as our Lord, as our God, because we know you're a chain-breaking God. You're a healing God. You're a saving God. And God, just do what you can do this morning, God, because we know the tomb is empty, the stone is rolled away, and God, we know, Lord, that you've got something great here this morning for us. So do what all you can do. We love you, we praise you, and you're worthy of it all. Jesus Christ, we pray to everybody, say, Praise God. To see these children give their lives to Jesus Christ, the next generation is so powerful. And there's such a great anointment for this next generation that's been rising up. 
that God has an amazing calling for their lives. And I'm just praying right now that they'll stick with Jesus the rest of their lives. We got to pray him up, church. Pray him up. Because this is the beginning of a journey that's so beautiful. Sophie. Sophie has such a beautiful heart. I just got to meet her last week, actually. And after our baptisms that happened last week, God was pulling on her heartstrings big time. And during that, that altar call at the end of service, she, did not, she decided to give her heart to Jesus Christ, which is so beautiful. And so, Sophie, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. First question is, is Jesus the Son of God? Yes. And have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. If you were to die right now, where would you go? Heaven. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. You ready? Sophie, based on the profession of your faith, based off the profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to die with Jesus, and to rise with Jesus. Wednesday nights, and he's been coming on Sunday mornings, and over these last months of really getting to know John and teaching him and loving on him, he accepted Jesus in his life. And what's so beautiful, what's so beautiful about his heart is that he loves people around him. He has a very loving heart. I can't wait for you all to see that as he grows in Christ. So John, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Is Jesus the Son of God? And have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And if you were to die right now, where would you go? It's so beautiful. John, I will baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we connected really, really well. And um, man, Mason's been saved for a little while. But he said, I want to be baptized. I want to show people that I believe in God. And I hope that someone gets saved through this baptism. And so Mason, I'm proud of you. I'm so excited for you. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. Are you ready? First question is, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? And if you were to die right now, where would you go? Heaven. How beautiful. Ready? I'm going to come back here just a little bit. Mason, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To die in Jesus. got to know him and his entire family. Where are y'all at, by the way? There they are. You see them. They got two rows. Hunter and Spencer went first. And now it's Jackson's turn. What I love about Jackson is his meekness. He has such a meek spirit. And what I'm excited for today is to baptize you. 
first thing I asked him today, I said, are you excited for your baptism? He goes, I'm nervous. But you're excited, I know. And I'm excited for you. Are you ready? I'm asking you a few questions. First question is, is Jesus the Son of God? And is he the Lord and Savior of your life? If you were to die right now, Jackson, where would you go? Heaven. How beautiful. Jackson, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To die with Jesus, and to rise with Jesus. Woo! him for a few months now, and uh, ever since he's been in youth group, he's called me anything but Jared. Nicknames upon nicknames every week. Loves to play nine square. He loves, he loves all that stuff. But one thing that he's now realized is that he loves Jesus Christ. And through the teaching and the, and the learning and the questions that he's had, he's decided to get baptized. So we're going to baptize you. I'm going to ask you a few questions. You ready? First question is, is Jesus the Son of God? Yes. And is Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. If you were to die right now, Dawson, where would you go? Heaven. To heaven. That's so good. Dawson, I'm going to baptize you. You ready? Yeah. Dawson, I'm now baptizing you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To die with Jesus, and to rise with Jesus. Father God, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for seven baptisms, Lord Jesus. Lord, the next generation is stepping up, Lord. Lord, they're serving, they're loving you, they're learning more about you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I just speak life into our next generation. I, I speak life into the people that are here today because every person is here today for a reason. And Lord, I hope they come expecting something great. Because in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I pray for miracles. I pray for healing. I pray for souls being saved and lives being changed. And we'll have double the baptisms next month. Lord, I pray for these things, Lord Jesus. And we're so thankful, so thankful for your son who died on that cross, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you, you rose three days later. And we know that you're alive today in here. You're here today. Your spirit is with us. So, Lord, thank you for that. Lord, bless us in our worship, Lord, and our praise to you, Lord Jesus. Let our hands be raised, Lord Jesus, and our mouths, Lord, let it sing. Lord, we love you, and we pray all these things will come to fruition. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said.
Sing it, church. If you walked out of the great I'm walking to, if you walked out of the great I'm walking to, if you walked out of the great I'm walking to, if you walked out of the great I'm walking to. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to. Corn. Ain't no grave. Come on. All over this house. Come on. Ain't no grave. Woo. God, we praise you. Ain't no grave gonna hold this body down. Woo. Hallelujah. Wow. Man, thank y'all for being here. Amen. It's my honor, my privilege. You know, this is a part of worship that a lot of people just, they tune out. But it is our time to give back to God. It is our time to say, you know what, God? You got out of the grave and I'm out too. And God, it's my honor, my privilege to God to sow seed back into your kingdom. That's, that's part of a Christian's journey. A lot of people think tithes and offerings has become a cuss word. It's not. It's a kingdom word. And so I'm going to ask our deacons, and I'm going to ask them to come on down. I'm going to pray a blessing over you guys. Give your neighbor a high five and say, thank you for being here today. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Hallelujah. Whoa. Oh, I can't wait to preach. Lord God. Y'all ready, Father God? In Jesus' name, it's our honor, our privilege to God to sow seed back into your kingdom. God, thank you for financially blessing us. Thank you to God that, Lord, you are the head. Lord, you're the head of the church. You're the head of this world. You're the head of everything, God. And today, I believe, we believe, dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we just don't celebrate because it's Easter. God, we're going to celebrate tomorrow, too. Lord, I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you, God, for the seed, the tithe, the offering that's going to go back into your kingdom. And God, Lord, you just reminded me. It is very evident, dear God, that the seed that people are sowing today, Lord, there were seven baptisms today, our, our babies, our children. So, God, it is our honor to sow into the kingdom. Lord, keep saving, delivering people right now. Lord, I pray a blessing over these beautiful people. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Sing that again. Come on. Woo. Yes. I'll preach it. No Walking 
I speak it over y'all. Hallelujah. In the world out of the grave, I'm walking to. In the world out of the grave, I'm walking to. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to. Let's walk out that grave. Hallelujah. Woo. If you walk down, down to the grave, I'm walking to. Give God a big old praise. Come on. Come on, church. Ah. trumpet sound. The old grave is going to burst open, y'all. Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm ready. My heart is right. I pray to God I can deliver this word the way you downloaded it into my spirit. God, I pray for every person that's here right now, God from the front to the back, side to side, and top to bottom. God, I accept my assignment today to deliver the infallible, the inerrant Word of God. No government, no Congress, no Senate, no person, no people can stop what you are doing. We declare that today over this house. God, I pray to God. I know there's some, maybe somebody's here today don't know you. I know you took 39 lashes and I know dear God I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray big today God I pray every lash that you took save a soul today save 39 today God I know that's huge but not really or if you can birth a church of 3,000 in one day you can I know you can save 39 so God bless us today. We love you. Give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Somebody give God praise. I'll preach a little bit. Come on. Woo, great job. Woo, great job. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Gosh. I just, uh, I'm so thankful. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all those even watching by Facebook and uh, YouTube and our church app. And, uh, but more than anything, I want to thank God for being here. How many of you know you can have YouTube, all the tubes you want? 
But if, if God don't show up, nothing's going to happen. And, man, I'm looking at a full house today. People coming. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for coming expecting to see God work in this house. Amen. Turn your neighbor one more time. Give him a high five and say, thank you for sitting by me today. Ain't no grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, I want to I preach today on a subject called a, a resurrected life. A, re, a resurrected life. How many of you know, listen to this, the resurrection messes people up. It's the most radical story in all the Bible. It's like people are still, like, how did somebody die and get put in a borrowed tomb? And how on the third day? That's why we call him Jesus. Nobody else, Muhammad couldn't do it. Nobody else could do it, but only our King Jesus. Amen? Only Jesus could get up. Amen? So, man, that's, it's the most radical, radical story in the Bible. But see, the world, the world don't understand it. We just think everybody's saved, everybody's going to heaven, everybody knows Jesus. Boo, you're wrong. You, you, you wrong. I guarantee you in here today, right now, the majority is lost. See, we think, we think because we're a church that saves us. Church didn't die for you. We, we think if we're good, we're going to make it to heaven. There's good people in hell. And can I pray? I'm not, listen, I'm not going to change because the house is packed. We, we're going to get some word today, amen? But here's the thing about the world, y'all ready? The world that we live in goes from life to death. But a child of God goes from death to That is so good. That is so good. Our last breath here is our first breath in eternity. Don't sound like a bad deal, amen? So how in the world, what does a resurrected life look like? Seriously, what does a resurrected life look like? And so listen, I'm going to take my time with you real quick. Give me 20, 25 Maybe 20 cents. I love Bob. I, one day y'all will catch on to what Bob just said. He said, take your time, preacher. Amen. Y'all, y'all good. Everybody, it's all right. It's all right. What does a resurrected life look like? What does it look like? Number one, really, I promise, I've got two points, and we, we're going to get out of here and say, watch this, somebody going to get saved. It's going to be so good. Number one, greater. So what does a resurrected life look like? Greater than the world. I know that's too simple for some of you. But a resurrected life, it means that whatever's going on in me is greater than anything going on around me. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Everybody say greater than the world. Everybody say greater than the world. When you say I am a child of God, I have been resurrected by Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Watch this. You don't have to stay in the tomb. You don't have to stay in the grave. You don't have to watch, watch. I'm just telling y'all, it is greater. What's going on inside of us is, oh God, hallelujah, is greater than anything Amen. you're up against right now. Anything. You name it, watch this. I'm standing on this. God is greater. Anything you're up against right, Brian, you, you don't know where I'm at. God does. God does. Hallelujah. So watch. Greater, greater than the world. The Bible says, let me back it up with Scripture. 1 John 4, 4. Y'all knew where I was going, didn't you? Watch what the Bible says. You. Everybody say, he's talking to me. The rest of you say, he's talking to me. You, dear children. God calls you my child. Some of you have outgrown your childhood of your mindset, and now you're so sophisticated, you got all them alphabet in front of your name. Never mind. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Let's just get in your spirit, please. Because the one, ah, the one who is in you, Jesus, is greater than the one Satan who is in the world. Listen, we give Satan way too much credit. We give Satan way too much stinking crap. I double dog dare him try to walk in this house today. It'd be a bad day for hell. I just think it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to give hell hell. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to me, listen to me, listen. I need you to perk your ears up. I need you to lean in and listen to me. God says greater. Everybody say greater. Greater is he, Jesus, than the Satan who is in the world. 
So listen to this. No matter what you're up against, and I'm not making light of anything you're up against, but here's what I am telling I'm going to stand on this. God is greater than any weapon, any sickness, any doctor's, uh, any doctor's report, anything that is going on in your life. If your children have gone crazy, wild, Jerry Springer live, my God is greater, and he can turn them around and bring them back. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to convince you today that greater is he. Y'all look at me, greater is he. That he lives in me. That he is in the world. Say, Brian, what if you get a bad doctor's report? Oh, they're going to come. Oh, they're going to come, but they got to go the same way they came. You say, Brian, hold on just a minute. Hold on now. I, what, what if this? No, no, no. I'm just telling you. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. Listen, a resurrected life equals Jesus is greater. I know it's simple. We have complicated the heck out of Jesus. We have made Jesus so all about us. This is what I do. This is where I'm at. This is what's going on in my life. And Jesus is sitting there going, hey, won't you just join me? Won't you just join where I'm working at? I'm just telling you today, no matter where y'all are at, and I, we got a lot of people here today, but listen to me, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on in your life, if you will truly believe, 1 John 4, 4, that greater is God, Jesus, Holy Spirit that lives in us, than he is in the world, I'm telling you, you'll get, you'll get out of that tomb. You'll get, you'll get out of that tomb. Here, here's, how, here's how Jesus is greater I wrote this in my notes. Jesus got up, he got out, and he got in. He got up, he got out, and he got in. I'm going to do it again. He got up, he got out, and he got in. Uh, he got up, he got out, he got in. He got up, he got out, he got in. You say, Brian, why are you saying it so much? Because y'all ain't got it yet. He got up. He got up out of the grave. How many of y'all believe that? Watch this. Even if it wasn't Easter, do you still believe, hallelujah, that he got up? He got And he got out. And then he got in. Hold on a minute. God said, Jesus got up, he got out, and he got in. So listen, if Jesus got up, I'm trying to help. If Jesus got up, if Jesus got out, and Jesus got in, talk to me. We can too. We can too. How many of you know people call you bigots and they'll say, Brian, you're just, you're just an old Jesus freak. Yep. Yep. Nobody else can do me like Jesus. Nobody else can heal me like Jesus. Nobody else can turn it around like Jesus. Nobody else can stand up in me and like Jesus. Nobody else is going to come back for me like who? Like Jesus. So I'm just telling you, he got up, he got out, and he got in. Turn to your neighbor and say, he got up. Jesus got out. And now watch this, I can too. I can. We're going to do it one more time. Everybody say, Jesus got up. Jesus got out. And I can too. And here's I tell this people all the time. If you don't like your past, there's things in my past I hate. I hate. And how many of you know that's the only thing the devil can hold against you? Is your past. I tell people this all the time, Jaywalk. If you don't like your past, rewrite your future. Rewrite your future. Rewrite your future. Don't drop the Holy Ghost pen. Rewrite your future. If you don't like your past, you don't like who you used to be, you don't like what side of the tracks you was born on, you don't watch. Rewrite your future. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I give you one last more point? I promise. I'm going to try to get out of here. All right. Watch what Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says. I love this. Now listen, you, you may say, Brian, I am a college professor. Me too. Brian, I have graduated from theology, from school, from seminary. Okay. I'm getting ready to read something over y'all's life. If you receive this, it'll change your eternity. One verse. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Watch. Here it goes. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, 11. Read now the ESV. The same power... 
that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. Y'all, come on now. Y'all, the same power that raised Jesus. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Either you believe it or you don't. Either you believe it or you don't. It's a quick, quit making Jesus complicated. I'm telling y'all and proclaiming today that God is in you. I'm telling you today the same power, hallelujah, that raised Jesus from the dead, got him out of the tomb, and placed him inside of you is the same power that's in you right now. So watch this, man. Y'all can lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. You can call things that are not as though they are. You can bind the enemy. Ah, I'm going to read that again over y'all's life. And please, when I get through reading this, I want y'all to say this. I accept that. I accept that. Watch. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. Y'all did. Y'all got five people. I accept that. Watch this. I'm going to read it till everybody says I accept it. Because that's the reason why a lot of people are living the way they're living. They're living in a tomb. God has wrote history. He owns it all. No grave can hold him. No Jew can kill him. No Roman can stop him. My God is alive in me. My God is alive in you. There's no reason, y'all. There is no reason why we can't have revival. There's no reason why we cannot do something great for God. Why do most people die to get, try to get things right with God? Why do most people just wait till they're on their deathbed and say, man, I've done wrong. Now, God can save you, but don't take that chance. Don't take that chance, I'm trying to tell y'all. No, nothing can stop what God is doing in your life. Y'all, y'all help me. Brian, you don't know. I can't pay my bill. God owns our ECC. God, God, own, God owns all that stuff. Now, you may have to work. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. If y'all don't get anything else out of this sermon today, listen to me. The same power, resurrection power, that raised Jesus from the dead. Is it every one of you? Here's my question. Do y'all believe that? What are you going to do about it? Number two. <laughs> what does a resurrected life look like? Now, I'm going to say this, and some of you are going to go, I knew. I knew he was going to talk Pentecostal. Only Baptists say that. What does a resurrected life look like? This is so true. You're free. free y'all don't know how long I have been in the I've been in the ministry for 27 years preaching for 27 years so I earned this gray used to be highlights now it's no lights <laughs> it's just a, listen it's my sermon I can preach it how I need, want to a resurrected life, if you say you have been resurrected, you're free. I speak it over you. I speak freedom in this house. I speak Jesus in this house. I speak the Bible over your life. Some of you are, I know you're saved. I know you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and say, let me ask you a question. Are you free? I love this story about Lazarus. Man, Lazarus come out of the grave. Uh, come out of the grave. And the last thing that Jesus told him, he said, loose that man. Loose that man. Take those dead clothes off of a living soul. And I speak it over our life, my life, your life, everybody in here. Loose that man. Come out of the grave, but you got to be loose. You got to be free. I have no reservation. I'm just preaching, man. God, just like Brian preaching. And he's going so fast, Kevin. I'm sitting there going, slow down, Holy Ghost. I'm just telling y'all, you're free. So who is the only thing can put you back in the tomb? Self, the enemy, lying over your life, and people. 
yourself. Come on. So I'm going to ask you all again. This, I'm going to stick here as I felt it in my spirit. I know you're here, but are you really? I know you're saved, but are you free? I know, that, I know you're alive and you're well and you're in this house. Look at me. If this is my last sermon, let it be. But here's what I'm saying. Are you free? Because a resurrected life equals freedom. It equals freedom. Here's what blows my mind. I, I lo- listen, when God gave me this, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Yes, Friday, I try to get a word on Friday. I was seven hours behind my desk getting this word. Well, Brian, what do you do all day? You wish, boo. Seven hours. My iPad, I would hit something, whoop, mess it up. I'm talking just a race. I got so mad, Travis, and I know you said, Brian, you're a preacher. Yeah, I got up, I took my iPad, and I threw it. I know y'all, y'all holier than I am. It's okay. And man, I was sitting there, I was like, why is it this hard? And you asked Dana, good thing, Dana said, I'm so glad I wasn't at home. I said, I'm glad you wasn't home either. <laughs> it's real. Look at me. This life is real. There's going to be hurt. There's going to be people try to nail you to the cross. There's going to be things in your life that you say, God, I cannot handle this no more. But I'm here today to make a declaration over your life. You can get up. You can get out. You will get through because not what I said, but what he said. Come on, give God praise in this house. I'm telling you, I speak Jesus over y'all, freedom over y'all. Hallelujah. That man, that man on the cross, y'all with me? I promise, give me 10. Praise team, y'all come. because I'm telling you, I could preach for five hours. Uh, yeah, I got two now. Go ahead. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> anyway, um, the man on the cross. Think about this. Think about this, Brad. There were two of them, right? Two thieves on the cross. One of them, if you're God, get us down. Well, I thought you was Jesus. I thought you was God. And that other man on the cross. I love this. That other man. Think about this, Jared. There he was hanging on a cross. Look at me. He had never been to church. No, no, no. Y'all hang with me. He had never been to Bible study. This man was not connected to a denomination. This man, to be honest with you, he, he never even said a prayer. This man, I know this is messing a lot of people up, but it's so true. I, this man had never been baptized. But this man, he looked over to his right, and he said, hey, something clicked. Something changed. Something happened. See, most of you pay more attention to a baptism or certificate than you do your name being written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Most people, well, where have you been at church? Well, I'm, I love church. I love y'all. Thank you for being here. But watch this. Church will not save you. A denomination will send you straight to hell if you allow. I'm trying to preach really good today. You say, Brian, how do you know that thief? Everybody say that thief. He'd never been to church. But I love this. I love this. I love this. He looked over and he said, hey, will you remember me? Jesus looked at him. No hesitation. Jesus didn't say, hey, what church do you attend like we stinking do? He did not look at him and say, hey, I love baptism. I pray. I think you should be baptized. If you're saved, you'll want to be baptized. I know some people get wet. And they come up wet. And there's no transformation in your life. This thief, I love this Courtney, this thief, said these words. Um, will you remember me? And Jesus, the king, said today, you'll be with me. Church, (laughs) That touched my heart. Listen to this. It's so crazy. Sheila, I started thinking about this. 
when he got to heaven, can y'all imagine this thief getting to heaven? Whoa! My God, where am I at? See, we just read the Bible like a little, little book. I believe every word in it. Congratulations on your baptism, man. God's going to use you, brother. Hang in there. Hear me? Hang in there. I see you, gal. Look at me. He, he, he said these words. He said, um, now he's standing before God. God looks over and says, why should I let you in? And this dude had no religion, no church attendance, no Bible study. He was sitting there going, I don't know. I don't know. He didn't know. And all of a sudden, he said, oh, all I know, I love this one. There was a man in the middle. God, there was a man on the middle cross. There was something different about his life. I don't understand it. I don't understand they beat him. They broke our legs. They didn't break his But this man in the middle, this man on the middle cross, he said, I could come. He said, today I could be here. So I don't know anything about a church. I don't know anything about baptism. I don't know anything about anything. But all I know is this, the man in the middle. The man in the middle. The man in the middle. He said, I I could come. And all I'm telling you all today, quit complicating Jesus. It's not, I love church. I love being your pastor. I love it, but it's not about me. It's not about Elkhorn. It's not about where you're at. It's all about the man in the middle. Come on, y'all. It's about that man in the middle. He said, I could come. It's not by works. It's not. It's not by what church you say you belong to. It's not about how many Bible studies you have attended or even been baptized. It's all about the man in the middle. And I'm going to proclaim today his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I'm not backing down off that. If he can save a thief who's never been to church, never been to Bible study, he cussed him out, cussed him out. And Jesus looks over at a thief and says, today, (laughs) today, today, I don't know where y'all are, but listen to me, today could be your day. Today could be your day. Today you could be like that old thief on the cross. Brian, why would God want me? Because he loves you. I don't understand his love, but he loves us. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3.18. How many of you glad you came to church today? Man, thank y'all for being here. The Bible says, for indeed Christ died for sins once for all. Everybody say he died one time. (laughs) The just, watch what he says. The just, the righteous. For the unjust, for the unrighteous, watch this, the innocent, for the guilty, so that he might bring us to God. Can we please just agree upon this? It's all about Jesus. And all he wants to do is save you. All he wants to do is redeem you. If he can save a thief, he can save anybody in this house today. Might bring you to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but watch this, but made alive in the spirit. Let me land a plane. I think I shared this story a while back, but God brought it to my attention again, and I want to share it with you again. Me and Dana, we went to a restaurant a while back and we were finished eating and we were ready to go and our waiter came over to our table 
and said, sir, and I told him, I said, sir, we're ready to go. <laughs> Will you please bring us our bill? The man, our waiter, he looked back at us and he said, I'm so sorry. I should have been over here a while back, a little bit earlier. But there was a man, it's true, there was a man sitting in a corner booth. He said, I wanted to, share, I wanted to tell you this, this man, he paid for everything. He even left a good tip for me. Everything that you got has been paid for. And he said these words that stuck in my spirit. You're free to go. You're free to go. Me and Dana, we looked at each other and I was like, whew. Thank you, that, that's good news. Somebody paid our bill and we're free to go. Can I tell you something? God spoke this into my spirit. That man on the middle cross, he has paid your bill. He is, well look, he has canceled your debt. He died for us. You are free to go. Free to go. He died for us, he paid our debt. He canceled everything. You say, Brian, I've been bad. All of us have. There is none righteous, no, not one, is what your Bible says. We have all sinned. The Bible says if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. You better get over yourself. It's all about the man in the middle. It's all about him. If you would, stand to your feet all over this house. It's time to come out of that tomb, amen? It's time to live a resurrected life. How? Do you live a resurrected life? Look at me, you gotta get up, you gotta get out, and you gotta live free. John 3, 16 says, for God, I'm gonna make it personal, y'all ready? For God so loved Brian Rafferty. Can y'all say that? For God so loved Mitchell Woodridge. You gotta make your salvation personal. You can't live off of grandma's coattail. You, you can't live off of a church what they said. Watch, you can't live off of a baptismal certificate. You, you can't live off how just or how unjust you are. It's all about the man in the middle. And I declare over y'all today, if you don't know this man named Jesus, he wants to pay your debt. He wants to cancel everything in your life that has went against him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, Without the shedding of blood, there be no remission of sin. Somebody had to die for you. And I tell people this all the time. If Jesus Christ can die for us, the least we can do is live for Him. For God so loved Brian Rafferty that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever, that's you, sir. For whosoever, that's you, ma'am. For whosoever, that's you, teenager. Believes in him, I love this, will not perish, but have eternal life. I speak that over y'all today. Look at me, don't die and go to hell. Well, Brian, what if Jesus is not real? I'm gonna take my chance. <laughs> He's already done so much for me. And really and truly, he's done all of it for every one of us. How many of y'all can testify today God's been good to you? Amen. Yeah, God's been good to you. There's a, there's a lady in this church right now. Her name is Miss Vonda. Miss Vonda Wilson was diagnosed with us. She only had, the day that me and Bobby Walker went and seen her, she had seven days to live. Tell me that God don't heal. We was there. We anointed her head with oil. We served her Holy Communion. Bobby done something I've never seen a man do before. He, he looked at her and he said, I want you to pray for me. You see, a lot of y'all sitting there going, why'd he do that? I don't know. 
Miss Vonda put her hand on his head and prayed one of the most precious, beautiful prayers. Well, Miss Vonda's here today. She's alive today. The lesions in her body has shrunk. Hey! And I'm telling you, and gee, y'all believe what you want to believe. I'm telling you, I'm declaring today, if it had not been for the man in the middle, none of us would be here right now. If it had not been for the man in the middle to look over our lives and say, man, I'm going to die for everybody, red and yellow, black and white, everybody's precious in his sight. So I'm going to ask you right now, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? So, Brian, you're pretty passionate about it. Yeah, hell's hot. And once you take your last breath, y'all look at me and say, Brian, I'll never come back. Listen, I'm just telling y'all, time is running out. Time is running out. I firmly believe that Gabriel has his lips on the trumpet. I firmly believe that Jesus Christ could come back today, right now. God, come back. God just convicted me. praying before he comes back that everybody in here knows Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior come on let's go to heaven together amen let's go to heaven together amen let's come out of that tomb today let's get up let's get out let's start living a free life let's live for Jesus Christ say Brian you're pretty passionate oh yeah I was at the I was at Marathon with a five star this morning Man, there was a man to come in there. I don't even know if he's here. I hope he is. And I stopped in there really quick. Check this out. I had my suit on, and that's unlike me. So y'all help. I'm burning up right now. Y'all see that? It's, it's hard. I did it for God, and I did it for my mama. This man. He said, "Uh, what's your name?" That scares me. I said, "Uh, I'm Brian Rafferty." He said, you're the pastor of Elkhorn. I said, is that good or bad? He said, man, he said, a happy Easter. And I knew God was working. I knew, I, he, he thought he was there to get an energy drink. And so uh, this man, he reached out his hand and I shook his hand. And I said, man, what are you doing at 10 o'clock? He said, I don't know. I said, man, I would love to see you at church. Man, God, if you're here right now, I want to say I love you. It was an honor meeting you today. God has purpose in every step that you take. Y'all think y'all are here for baptisms? You wish. You think you're here because it's Easter. He's still God tomorrow. Hey, so good. I'm just telling y'all, get up, get out, let God in. It'll change your life forevermore. And I'm just telling you, live. Come out of that tomb today. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to say a prayer. Elkhorn, y'all know how we do this. We roll with it, man. We roll with it. We roll with it. We've got books in the back we already set up because we come expecting today. You may not know Jesus. Get up out of that tomb. Take them grave clothes off. And come out. All you got to do is step out of your, your aisle. They'll, they'll, I promise you, Elkhorn is good at this. <laughs> we'll let you out. We'll walk the aisle with you. If you want Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, I'm talking about the Lord, not just Savior, but the Lord of your life. I want you to say this prayer. Say, dear God, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. I'm asking you to forgive me and save my soul. Save me, Jesus. Take me to heaven. I want to spend eternity with you. And I believe that I'm born again, that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Whew, that was good. Anybody at all?
I'm not going, I don't want to embarrass you. But man, the Bible says that if something happened, you won't be ashamed of him. Is there anybody say, Pastor, today? Today, right now, I just said that prayer, and I know I'm on my way home. I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Is anybody in here? Come on, anybody, just raise your hands, wave at me really quick. Anybody? One. Two. Amen. Come on, wave at me. Come on, wave at me. Don't be ashamed of him. I'm going to open this up, man. If you said that prayer, I'm just going to ask you to get out of your your seat. Y'all did such a good job today. Thank y'all. Thank you for being here. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I love you guys. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God be gracious unto thee. May he lift his countenance upon you. And may God give you peace. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, I love you. And thank you for going to heaven with me. This altar is open. Y'all come. Let's come. Just come on down this old altar and give God praise. Let God love on you. Y'all deserve God to love on you. Amen. So in Jesus' name, you come. You said that prayer. I want to see you at the altar. Amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you at the altar. Don't leave. We've got Holy Communion. We've got Holy Communion. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. I was lost, I was blind, yeah. I was running out of time. Yes. Sin separating, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, come on, come on, me in your side. You, oh yeah, made a way, made a way, yeah. <laughs> Across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Oh, yeah. Broke my chains, freed my soul. Free me, God. For the first time I had hope. Bless him, Jesus.
Isn't God good? What a beautiful spirit's in this house. God loves you. I used to think God was so mad at me because I used to pay more attention to my sin than I did to Savior. I'm not making light of sin. You need to repent. But here's what I'm telling you. Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. We're going to go through this one more time because here's the deal. Look at me. You. Please don't walk out the same way you came in. Please make sure, look, make sure your heart has been resurrected. Make sure before you walk out, look, the world's waiting on you world hadn't changed you have but the world hasn't but greater is he that is in you than he is in the world get up get out let God in that equals freedom that equals freedom the only people the only people will put you in a tomb religion will put you in a tomb people's expectations will put you in a tomb just be who God look, look at me be who God created y'all to be amen I may never see you again here on earth but watch this I pray that I'll get to spend eternity with you in heaven that's it how many of you know one day your heart's gonna stop guarantee it look at me one year I buried five teenagers I'm not here to scare I'm just telling you the truth. It's a reality. It's going to happen. One day, y'all going to come visit Rafferty? I ain't there. But make sure, before you walk out, that God walks in. Because I promise you, if he's in, there'll be fruit come out. So I'm going to pray. Listen, I don't know where y'all are. I just know when I, when I, when I hear the Lord. Somebody here today, you need to make a decision right now. Right now. Right now, Brian. What are people going to think? Don't let a person send you to hell. All you got to say is, hey, excuse me, I got to get to that altar really quick. So, Father God, this, 
your people. And God, I know when you walk into a room, dear God, so Lord, bless them right now. I pray, dear God, that Lord, just touch hearts. God, I pray you set us all free in this house. Lord, save, deliver, and set free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This altar's open. We're going to play through it one more time. I promise I'm done after that. You can't beat salvation in somebody. But if your heart is beating right now, yeah, come on to this old altar. In Jesus' name, come on, sing it one more time. Glory to His name. Come on. give God praise. Amen. Amen. So what I want to do, I'm going to ask my deacons to come forward, those who are helping serve communion. Listen to me. It is our honor. I love this part. It is our honor to serve you guys Holy Communion today. The Bible says it. Jesus was broken. I wouldn't have done it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I wouldn't have done it. But he did. The Bible says that he was beaten so bad that they couldn't even recognize him. That's real. How many of y'all believe that's real? Y'all realize you're getting ready to take the body and the blood of Jesus as a witness of his death, burial, and resurrection. Y'all realize that, right? This is some serious stuff. And we as Christians, what this symbolizes is I'm born again. I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to serve Holy Communion. I need my people who's going to be helping with the traffic control, get in position. Hopefully we got this pretty good now. Amen. And so what you're going to do, you're going to have communion. I'm going to ask you to please don't leave. Y'all look at me. Please don't leave. If you got to go to work, go to work. But just to leave, I hope Jesus don't do you like that. Thank God, Terry, right? He won't. So, uh, God, will you hand me that bread? Thank you so much. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. We realize this is not his literal body, but it's a symbolic figure of his body. I could not imagine six hours before he died, him and his disciples was around the table. He said, y'all know everything I've been talking to you about? He said, it's getting ready to happen. They're going to arrest me. They're going to beat me. They're going to nail me to a cross. And they're going to break my body. But he said, also, the story's not over. Because this bread represents his body. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you can be saved. By his stripes, you can come out of the tomb. By his stripes, you can go to heaven. So this is not just an ordinary piece of bread, Miss Wanda. This represents the body of Jesus Christ. You understand? This represents the body of Jesus Christ. And he done it for me. And hallelujah, he done it for you. He is God.
The Bible says without a shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sins. He had to die. There's over 7,000 promises in your Bible. And all of them are based on the blood. Every one of them is based on the blood. So here in just a moment as you come down, I want you to break that bread. And you may want to hold it up and say, God, thank you for saving me. Take that bread and put it into the, to the juice. God, thank you for dying for me. And God, thank you. Take it that you live in me. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this communion. I want to thank you for these deacons. I want to thank you for the body of Christ. I want to thank you for every person here right now. God, I pray as people take communion, God, if there's any sickness, any disease, God, as soon as they take it, heal them in Jesus' name. God, I just thank you, God, that right now we get to celebrate you. God, nobody else can do it like you can. So, God, I just pray, God, as these precious people take the body and they take the blood, they'd realize that you died. You was beaten and you was bruised. But, God, also, you're coming back. And so, God, I praise you and thank you, dear God. Bless the elements, dear God. Bless the bread and bless, bless the juice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, from the back, we're going to come down these aisles. Let God love on you. And if you would, please go back to your seat. We're going to have a word of prayer over you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Bless these people. Bless these people. God, we love you.
How many of you are glad uh, you came to church today? Amen. <laughs> Y'all did so good. You did so good. Just a little bit overwhelmed right now. Uh, I want to. There's a good woman of God who walked to my left, Miss Janice Atwood. She's back in church today. Isn't that good? <laughs> Janice, we love you. Out when you start mentioning the names, um, so good to see you. So good to see you guys. And God loves you. Never forget that. And some great things happened today. Amen. Seven baptisms and just a lot happened. And uh, so I want to praise God for you guys. And I know it's been a, a big morning. But thank you all for being at Elkhorn Baptist Church. We promise to love you and take care of you. And we promise to always try to bring the best out of your life. You guys did so good. You enjoy your afternoon. I'm going to ask Jared and Ashley to come forward. And uh, if you guys would, I know we got a lot of guests here today. Um, I'm going to ask you guys if you would, as God's family, just come forward. If you could, just come up here to the altar. And we always try to bless people and pray a blessing over them as they leave. So, uh love you guys and every Sunday I get a little note um, from my little friend over there she uh, she says to Pastor Brian happy Easter and it may not mean nothing to y'all but it's little things like it just touches your heart I love Jesus and that's a little girl and uh, so it's the little things in life that we miss a lot of times. Y'all are some special people. I'm going to get off the stage so I can go round two. Um, Bob, help me. We're, take your time, preacher. Amen. I love you guys. And uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, thank God for you. It's thick in here today. The one in the middle. The one in the middle. He died for you. He died for me. Man. If this was your first Sunday with us, we want to invite you to meet us in the back after service. We want to get to know you. We want to know your name, your story, how God led you to us this morning. So if you just meet us in the back, in the corner on the left, there's lights up. You can't miss it. If you got saved today, if you felt the Lord pulling on your heartstrings, maybe your heart started beating a little faster than normal, your gut started twitching, if you would come forward and meet us, we just want to get some information about you. We want to talk to you about what just happened, what the Lord's doing in your life. If you just meet us up front, just for a minute, it's not going to take up a bunch of your time, but we want to get to know you. We want to love on you. We want to know who you are in your story and what God is doing in you. And we want to be a part of that. Just a reminder, a quick little plug, there is not service tonight. Enjoy your time with your family. Dwell with Jesus in your households. There's also not gonna be Wednesday night service this week due to spring break. So that's your time to worship at home. You don't have to be here. This is just a building. Jesus lives with you. So worship at home, worship with your family, spend time together, open your Bible. There might be a little bit of dust on it. It's time to get it out. It's time to read. Jesus died for you. The one in the middle. The least you can do is read that gift he gave us. He left a Bible for you so that you could read his word, so that you could build a relationship with him. Open it, read it. Study it. I learn something new every time I read John 3, 16. 
simplest scripture in the world. But for God so loved the world, not just the world, you. God so loved you, Melissa Bell, that he gave his one and only son, the man in the middle, to die for you so that you could go to heaven and spend eternity with him. So read that Bible this week. Or better yet, give that Bible to somebody who's never met Jesus before. The man in the middle died for them too. He loves them too. So be Jesus this week. You don't have to be in a church building to do that. Let me pray a special, let me pray a blessing over you all. Reach out to someone's shoulder, lay hands on each other, and let's pray. <laughs> Father God, thank you for this wonderful reminder. A day that only happens once a year, Lord, but we should recognize it all year long. Lord, thank you for sending your son down to die on a cross for us. Lord, I pray a special blessing on each individual that's in this room right now with our hands laying on hands on each other we speak healing. We speak salvation. We speak life change. As we're so thankful to be at a soul winning, life changing church. Lord, we believe, and it's been on our hearts, it's been on our spirit all year long, the best is yet to come. So, Lord, I speak life into the people in this room, I speak life into this church. I speak life over the worship band. I speak life over the youth ministry. I speak life over the van ministry. I speak life over the children's ministry, the security, Lord, the media, Lord Jesus, the deacons, Lord Jesus, the pastor, Lord Jesus, and his wife. I speak life over our children and our children's children. Lord, right now we're planting the seeds. Lord, let us speak your, your word, your truth, Lord Jesus, into our children and our children's children, Lord Jesus. We had seven today, seven, the number seven, Lord Jesus. There were supposed to be nine, but Lord, you made it appointed for seven. So Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for the five youth and the two kids that we had up there. And every story is different. God, you brought them from all different places. But once, one thing that's unified is that they're looking at the cross and they've accepted you as their Lord and Savior and they showed it to all the world today. The thousands that are on Facebook and the hundreds that are in here. We thank you so much, Lord. And Lord, as we pray over them right now, we speak life as their, as their walk is just now beginning. Lord, we love you. And we're so thankful. And Lord, let us come back next week expecting for soul winning and life changing as we point people to the cross and the resurrection inside this building and outside this building. Because guess what? Elkhorn's back. Let's go out. Let's go live for you, Lord Jesus. And we can do that at Kroger. <laughs> we can do that at church. We can do that around the dinner table at home. Let's speak your word this week, Lord Jesus, and let's go be feet washers. Thank you, Jesus, for the reminder of today that you died on the cross for us. But guess what? You also rose three days later, and we can praise you all the day long for that. Live inside of us today, Lord. Let the fruits bear within us. As we go out these walls, we know that we're going to be attacked. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to stomp on the enemy today. We're going to stomp on him today because in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy has no hold on us. The enemy has no hold on our children. In the name of Jesus, they have no hold on our children's children. 
Lord Jesus, because the enemy cannot win. He's already lost. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, I pray this special blessing over every individual, every couple, every family member in here, Lord, from the top to down, from side to side, I pray for heads of protection, Lord, over these people this week as they go live for you. And Lord, guide them through the dark of this world because you are the light of the world. And so, Lord, I just pray abundant blessings. We love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Be blessed, you all. Happy Easter. <laughs>